If you end up liking this tutorial, check out the comments for a full course on Roblox Studio. But with that being said, welcome to the first um, episode, I guess you would call it, of the Roblox Script tutorial. Right? So all I'm going to teach in this series of episodes is just how you can script in Roblox. So let's start off with actually making a script. So I'll put it inside on server, script service, just a regular white script, okay? So what I want to teach you about is just variables, okay? Printing and variables. What are variables, what can be a variable, what cannot be a variable, and so on. But first I'm going to teach you about printing, okay? The way you print is you just say print, like so. And then you do two brackets. And inside of here, uh, anything inside of here will be printed out to be one number. So if I say one, two, three, for example, and if I run the game right now, then it's going to print out one, two, three, the end, right? So prints are good for kind of like, like testing, right? So if you, if you have like an error somewhere or like if something isn't working as intended, then you can use prints, right, to figure out like, like maybe some value is incorrect, or maybe, you know, the code is incorrect or something. So, you know, prints are great for, you know, reading values, reading this. They can print out text, you know, hello, into, you know, two quotation marks. So that's going to print out hello. So that's kind of the idea of printing, right? Anything you put in these brackets will be printed out over here. Even if you put nothing, so literally just nothing, which is nothing. Like, if, if the value you put in here is nothing, then it's going to print out nothing. So it's going to always print something out, okay? Um, now let's talk about variables. The way you create a variable is you say local, okay? So you say local, and then you give it a name. So the name, I'll just call it var. Yeah, I'll just call it bar. You can call it, you can name it whatever you want, as long as it's not a word that Roblox code already uses. So I can't name a variable local because like Roblox already uses the word local to create a variable. So I can't do local local. Like that, it, it's not gonna let me do that, right? So it has to be a new word which doesn't um, like again like a, which isn't a word that Roblox uses. I just say equals. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna make this variable called bar equal to, to some value. So I can say 100. So then if I print out var, we're going to print out 100 because we made a variable called var which is equal to 100. So yeah, now it's going to print out var which is 100. And because var is a number, we can add on to it. So I can say var plus 1. So if I print out var plus 1, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give me 100 and 1. Now, the thing about variables is that they can be basically any value that's inside of Roblox, right? So it could be a number, it could be a string, which is you know, a piece of text, uh, it could be a boolean, which is a true or false value. So booleans is true or false, right? It can be a color, right? So it could be a color. Um, I mean, let's see, what, what other values? Vector 3, C frame. So I'll, I'll talk about C frames and vector in, a few, in the next uh, episode. But variables can be effectively any value. They can be nil. You can make a variable equal to nothing, right? Um, and yeah, so basically, almost every single value can be assigned to a variable. Right? Um, yeah, and then you know, we just print out that variable. We're gonna end up printing the value. Um, now the thing about variables as well is let's say I have a variable called hello, right? And then I'll, I'll just print it up over here. If I want to change the variable, then I would just say, well, so I, I, I just say the name of the variable, no local, I just say the name, and then I can make it equal to something else. So local creates the variable, but then just saying the, the name of the variable will um, change its value. So I create the variable and its value is hello. And then on the very next line, I change its value to be by. And so when I print out the, the variable now, its value is by, so it's going to print by. And the great part about this as well is that when you're changing the variable, it doesn't have to be a string. So when we're creating a variable, it's hello. But I could set it equal to be 1, 2, 3. Right? And it's going to be equal to 1, 2, 3. So that's the great part of Roblox variables is that they don't have... Once a variable is made, it's very flexible, you know? Like, it doesn't have to be a string. You can change it to be a number. You can change it to be a false or a true or a nil. You can change it to be any value 
and it doesn't just have to be a string. Because I know like some programming languages have this, where like if you create a variable that's a string, then you can change it to something that's not a string. Um, so yeah, so Roblox is very efficient in this regard. And the next thing, which I think is honestly one of the more important ones, is you can make variables equal to the items inside of the variable. So let's say I make a part, right? Just a standard part. So it's a, it's a part inside of the workspace. I can assign this variable to be equal to this item. And the way I do this is I just say, so we know that this part is inside the workspace. So I can just say workspace dot part. Like so. Or if you want to be safe, you could do pull and wait for child part. So what this does is it just makes sure that like the part is actually loaded, right? Just so you, because like if, if we just do dot part and the part isn't loaded, it's gonna give us an error. So I like to do wait for child because then we know that everything has loaded in. And so now this bar is equal to this part, like so. So if I print out the bar, there we go. As you can see now, it's you know we we have the variable of the part. So that's episode one, and in episode two, I'm going to show you how you can actually, you know, scrub the parts, how you can change their properties, and how you can access their built-in events and functions.